And good Saturday morning, tracking light snow, and it is creating some problems on the roads right now. So we're going to take a look at how long the snow chances are going to last today and how long this winter like feel lasts in my forecast. A deadly overdose lands two people behind bars. The significant amount of drugs police found in that suspect's home and the warning now coming from police. And Indy is celebrating big for St. Patrick's Day in the middle of March Madness weekend. Was anything going to stop you from coming out today though? Nah, nah, I'm pretty diehard. We'll look at St. Patrick's Day celebrations in Indy and recap some of the big games that took place last night. Fox 59 Morning News at 7 starts right now. From Indiana's number one news source, this is Fox 59 Morning News. 701 on a Saturday morning. Good morning to you. Mainly cold, 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 cold and cloudy will now be cold. I just made up a new word. I like that. I have, I made up snowers a long time ago is for snow showers. Snow showers? Okay. Yes. <laughs> I'm digging it. I'll add that to the list. Yeah. I like, I like your new word. Thank you. It's You're nice welcome. to see you in person. Yes. I feel like I haven't seen you in studio in a while. It's because you don't. I was on a good streak of being outside in the cold and yes. in the rain for 17 days straight. And now I'm finally inside. Uh, yes, and that streak broke, and you're probably glad it broke this morning. Yes, I'm okay. I'm okay with the air conditioning and the no rain, because yesterday was rainy, it was windy. Yes, and today we're tracking snow. Oh, and lots of it, fun. Yes, so it is creating headaches on the roads this morning, and it doesn't take much snow to create tricky travel, and that's exactly what we're seeing. So this light of snow, this light snow that has accumulated in the Carmel area, it just... A representation of what we are seeing across central Indiana right now. Seeing an uptick in some of the crash activity this morning as well. But I want to dive into Live Guardian radar because we have the snowfall that is scattered and heavier bands that are also setting up in parts of central Indiana. We have light snow falling in Kokomo and it's steady within Tipton and within Tipton County, but where we have this darker shade that is showing up northwest of Pendleton through Madison County, also southeastern Hamilton County and now through Marion County. This is where we are seeing most of that snowfall at this time and within those bands where we have the darker shade of blue that is going to drop the visibility quickly and we are also seeing that on some of our in-dot cameras. So this is a look at the southwestern part of our area near Bloomington, Nashville, Spencer. This wave is going to continue to push off to the east and most of it is actually going to move out of here by the middle part of the morning. For the rest of our day, we're going to be left with mainly cloudy skies and also colder temperatures. We are going to stay below 30 degrees for the next several hours. And at this time, we're at 28 with strong winds out of the west southwest at 16 miles per hour, 29 in Spencer, 30 in Bloomington, and it's 24 in Bedford. I am trying Tracking chilly weather through the weekend and milder temperatures on the way next week. I have the details on that in my forecast. All right, Amber, thank you so much. 704 and a 21 and 22 year old are facing several charges after an overdose death in Kokomo. If convicted, they could face up to 40 years in prison. Fox 59's Hannah Fullman joins us live in studio this morning to explain what led up to these charges. Hannah, good morning. Good morning, Cameron. A 27-year-old Indiana woman is dead after a fentanyl overdose at a Kokomo apartment last weekend. Now, according to court documents, this all began through a drug deal message exchanged on social media. The victim and one suspect, 21-year-old Emily Rouse, sent Instagram messages back and forth starting on Friday, March 10th. The next day, officers responded to the Pine Valley apartment complex. That's where they found a man performing CPR on the unresponsive 27 year old who ultimately died. Rouse reportedly sold the deceased five fentanyl tablets the night she overdosed. Court documents reveal that Rouse was facilitating this drug deal for her boyfriend, Deshaun Brown. Brown was already in the Howard County Jail on gun charges. Police found more than 600 fentanyl pills, more than a pound of marijuana, and a handgun in Rouse's Baxter Road apartment. Anytime we're dealing with fentanyl, we have to be very careful because it takes such a small amount that can cause an overdose. Uh, in terms of the over 600 pills that were that were seized, um, I will say that in my experience, that is a significant amount for this city. 
The identity of the victim has not yet been released. Rouse and Brown face charges with dealing a controlled substance causing death along with additional drug related charges. Now, if convicted, they could face between 20 and 40 years in prison. For now, reporting in the studio, Hannah Fullman, Fox 59 News. Hannah, thank you. Right now, a former Avon youth football coach and substitute teacher is accused of molesting and taking nude pictures of his players. 18-year-old Matthew Duran was arrested this week and is charged with child molesting, seduction, and exploitation. The investigation started back in January. That's when parents of the victim called Avon Intermediate School West. They said Duran, who was a substitute teacher at the time, was sending inappropriate text messages to their 11-year-old son. Court documents say Duran sent the child text messages via text, Facebook, Snapchat, and Fortnite. Police also say they found several nude images of that young boy, which Duran took on FaceTime. During an interview, the boy reportedly told police Duran also molested him. Good boundaries are, are really important. Not putting yourself or your children in situations where they are alone with an adult. Avon Schools said Duran was fired after the boy's parents complained. Court documents also say he was also dismissed from his coaching position. The Avon Junior Athletic Association sent us a statement saying in part, leadership removed him from his position after some parents raised concerns that he may have been contacting younger athletes. The statement went on to say they're investigating the matter. A bipartisan bill at the state house would close a loophole in Indiana's child seduction law if it passes. It's a charge that applies in crimes when an adult in a position of trust or authority engages in a sexual contact with a child under the age of 18. Right now, the law only includes youth sports coaches employed by a school. The proposed change would ensure that any coach can be charged. This week, the bill passed in the house and is now headed to the Senate floor. 708 and police are asking for your help with an unsolved murder on Indy's near northwest side. Yesterday, police released this surveillance picture that they hope leads to an arrest. Police believe this man wearing a red mask and pajama pants shot two men while sitting in a car last April. It happened in the parking lot of a food mart near 30th and Kessler. One of the victims survived. The second victim, Kennell Thompson, died. This is one of those particular cases that, that kind of bothers us all. We need help. Nobody deserves uh, this kind of treatment, and it's a, it's a tragedy. We don't want loss of life, period. Anyone with information on the suspect in the surveillance picture can still contact either IMPD's Homicide Office or Crime Stoppers. New this morning in sports news, we start with a massive upset in the NCAA men's basketball tournament. Number one seeded Purdue lost in the first round to 16 seed Farley Dickinson. The score was 63 to 58. Our sports team will have reaction coming from this game coming up later in your morning sports report. Meantime, there is good news for the Hoosiers. IU won in the first round against Kent State. IU is a number four seed, while the Golden Flashes are a 13 seed. Kent State is this year's Mid-American Conference Tournament Championship. This year, the game is played in Albany, New York. The final score there, 71 to 60. Last night, our Dave Griffiths was there with, to witness the Hoosiers get that big win. He shares the highlights and the reaction from the team. In the NCAA tournament, you want your seniors to lead the way. Indiana got that and so much more from the duo of Trace Jackson Davis and Race Thompson. Those two combined for 44 points and 20 rebounds in the Cream and Crimson's NCAA opening victory. And Jackson Davis added a IU school record for an NCAA tournament game in five blocks. That senior leadership is something they talked about pregame. We look at each other and we say, that this, this, not our, this ain't the last time we're doing this. And I think that I came out uh, and I got a couple of easy buckets and that started us off a little bit. And then towards the end of the game, we had our closer and Trace, and he uh, finished out the game for us. It's huge for um, your upperclassmen to play well because then the lower classmen see that and they want to chip in and they want to do things, stuff of that nature. And so I think that um, we led by example, and um, I think the underclassmen, everyone played well. Just to have their confidence at all time high right now is really huge for us because they. They really picked up the slack on, on the offensive end and got us going. Next order of business for the Hoosiers last night, or this morning I should say, was to get a little rest. Sleep will be helpful when they have another game coming up tomorrow against Miami in the round of 32. Reporting with IU in Albany, I'm Dave Griffiths.
All right, Dave, thank you. A reminder, the IU women's team will get their first shot at the tournament this morning. The number one seed Hoosiers take on the number 16 seed Tennessee Tech in Bloomington. Tip-off is at 1130. Coming up next at 7, North Texas dealing with some major damage. Residents there are cleaning up after a severe storm brought golf ball sized hail and gusty winds to the area. We'll have a look at the efforts to the south as they prepare for more severe weather heading into next week. Amber? And roads are slick this morning in some spots that had the heavier band set up over them. We are still tracking the scattered snowfall across central Indiana. Find out how long the snow is going to stick around and what to expect the rest of our weekend in my forecast. Back home here in Indiana, the EPA says cleanup from the train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio is expected to take three months. All 1900 feet of the south tracks were removed from the site. More than 6 million gallons of liquid waste and 5400 tons of solid waste were also removed and then shipped to certified facilities across the country. We still have a long, long way to go, as you can see by the pile and the piles, but uh, we're getting the speed up. And uh, that's something that's very, very important, I know, uh, to the community. The EPA ordered states to stop blocking shipments of that waste as of yesterday. That's because these facilities handle these type of shipments every single day. Meantime, we do know some of that soil is coming to Indiana. Shipments here resumed this week after being stalled while the soil was tested. Shipments are going to the Heritage Environmental Services landfill in Putnam County. We told you Governor Eric Holcomb ordered third party testing of that soil. It found no harmful dioxins. Officials say more testing will be done on any incoming loads in the future. Happening now, another round of rain could impact cleanup efforts in California following this week's atmospheric, this week's atmospheric river, that is. Across the south, severe storms left behind extensive damage from cars to homes. Fox News correspondent Christina Coleman has more on that cleanup. 
Cleanup efforts are underway across the country after a line of storms pummeled multiple states this week. We probably saw egg-sized hail, maybe a little bit smaller. In Texas and Oklahoma, people are surveying the damage after hell fell throughout the region on Thursday. In Irving, gusty winds tore the roof off of a car dealership while heavy rain flooded this apartment complex. Residents have been returning to gather their belongings with many now left wondering what's next. My apartment is floating. Yeah, there's a lot of water in there. So in, and on the second floor, we don't have roof, we don't have ceiling, we don't have nothing. Here in California, people are still clearing water and debris left behind by this week's atmospheric river. Pacific Gas and Electric brought in additional crews to speed up power restoration to thousands of homes and businesses. And we still have a few more days to go um, to get things up and going again, but just to pull together and support each other. Due to these back-to-back -back storms, only about 36% of California remains in a drought, though state officials say years of dry conditions have created small cracks in levee walls. It's raising fears rushing water could break through and flood homes in future storms. On average, they are 57 years old. Um, and many of them were built using standards less rigorous than our current best engineering practices. Forecasters expect California to get another round of rain early next week. In Los Angeles, Christina Coleman, Fox News. All right, so it's snowing. It is. And then we also learned a new weather word, atmospheric <laughs> river. Yes, it refers to the jet stream and the series of storm systems that they've been seeing out in California. Well, it said that in the script. I'm like, I've never heard of no atmospheric river in <laughs> California. I'm like, give me some, some real names that I know, like Chattahoochee River or something. <laughs> like an actual river. An actual yeah. river. That's what I was confused. I'm like, atmospheric river, is that down south? It's not a river. It is not a river. It's a phenomenon. Yes. That's our third weather word for today. Yes, it is. A lot to learn <laughs> this morning. So. Pop quiz in the 9 o'clock hour. Oh, uh, yeah. So uh, this morning we have been tracking that snow, and it is creating problems on the roads. And this isn't even a lot of snow, but this is your reminder that it doesn't take much snow to create slick road conditions. You're looking at crash activity that's in the northbound lanes of 465. And this is at East 16th Street. There is another reported crash within Boone County. This one near Lebanon, northbound I-65 near State Road 39. And then we also have very slow moving traffic. You can see the oranges and the reds on the speed sensors within Tippecanoe County, Clinton and White counties. And this is due to very slick road conditions on I-65. And I wanted to bring up this camera. This is in the Lafayette area near State Road 26. As uh, drivers are traveling over the bridge, over that overpass, seeing a lot of hazards on semis and those vehicles because of how slick and I see the roads are, especially on some of the interstate overpasses. So you will want to be careful, even though we aren't seeing a lot of snow out of this system, it is still creating very slick road conditions, especially on untreated surfaces. And if you find yourself in with, within one of those heavier bands, it's going to drop the visibility quickly. And we still have some of the heavier bands setting up this one right along I-69 through Madison County. So just south of Anderson near Pendleton at this time. And we also have snowfall within Marion County too, zooming in and highlighting a few of those areas at IMS, Butler, uh, Broad Ripple picking up on a heavier band of snow right now. And then we also have snow falling in the Beach Grove area and on the city's east side. Avon Plainfield too, light snowfall and then light to moderate snowfall now moving into western parts of Morgan County. This wave is going to travel to the east and should push off to the east once we get to 9 o'clock this morning. For the rest of the day, it is going to be windy. We're going to be left with quite a bit of cloud cover and temperatures are going to struggle to rise today. We're actually going to hover in the 20s for the next several hours. We're at 24 right now. Northwest wind now at 17 miles per hour. That's making it feel much colder outside. Right now it feels like 11 degrees in Indianapolis. And notice temperatures do not rise too much more from here. We actually drop even more. And then we should bump back up near 25 degrees at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Winds still out of the west 15 to 20 miles per hour. Gusts up to 30 miles per hour going to keep wind chill values in the single digits for the next uh, several hours and well into the afternoon. We'll fall to 19 degrees tonight. Skies turning partly cloudy after midnight and still continuing to have breezy conditions tonight and heading into tomorrow. 
looking at a high of 39 degrees, but this is going to be much more of an improvement compared to what we'll have today. Cloud cover is going to decrease through the morning, and then we should have more of that sunshine into the afternoon. Milder air does return this week, and as we officially start spring on Monday, we will kick off the season at 524 in the afternoon. We're likely going to have more seasonal levels for those temperatures that afternoon. High 50 degrees Monday, 55 Tuesday. Chance for rain showers late with a soggier pattern setting up after Wednesday. We'll have that chance for rain Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday with highs in the upper 50s and could even rise near 66 on Thursday, Cameron. All right. Amber, thank you. I got people texting want to know where's the Chattahoochee River? It's in Tennessee. It's in Tennessee. On the way to Atlanta. That's right. Very good. <laughs> I know that from Alan Jackson. Very good. That's, that's when you know that's when you know you're almost there when you cross the Chattahoochee <laughs> River. Look it up. Still to come here this morning, electric cars are all the rage these days, but now a new company is hoping that a trend will reach all the way to the water as they unveil their first commercially viable electric boats. Details coming up next on Fox. Well, with all this talk about going green for the holiday, electric vehicles are becoming more and more popular. I get the joke, very nice riding there. Now with spring around the corner, one Florida-based company wants to make fueling your boat as simple as plugging it in to an outlet. Electric cars are still all the rage these days, and now the companies are hoping that a new trend will reach all the way to the water. Fox's Eben Brown has more from Miami in this edition of Fox on Tech. Electric cars are all the rage these days, led by brands such as Tesla and new investments from traditional auto manufacturers. And now a new company is hoping that trend will reach all the way to the water. But there's just one problem. You can't just take EV automotive technology and put it in a boat. A boat is operating in a hydrodynamic state, which basically means it has to push a lot of water out of the way, which is, is 
less efficient than pushing air out of the way. But the folks at Voltari have a solution. The company is unveiling the world's first fully electric performance boat. It's run entirely on batteries. There are zero emissions. But that doesn't mean you have to worry about running out of power on the open sea. Voltari recently completed a 91-mile trip from Key Largo to the Bahamas all on a single charge. The biggest challenge was was figuring out how we could get all of the lithium-ion battery packs integrated into a hull without having to sacrifice you know usable boating space ultimately the hope is to create enough demand to shift the market to a new standard which the company says is a win for boaters because they'll no longer have to line up to pay for fuel we work tirelessly to remove some of those things about boating that people aren't so excited about it's not just electric boating it's it's more fun boating the recently passed infrastructure bill contains seven billion dollars for ev charging stations it's not clear if any will be on the water in miami eben brown fox news all right meantime if you don't own a boat or an electric vehicle Here's an update on gas prices. This is more my speed. I drive a car and a bus. This is the news for me. Right now, the average price in Indiana is sitting at $3.50. It's now four cents more than the national average at $3.46. If you're looking to fill up ahead of the weekend, here's some of the cheapest spots that we found. Not too many in the teens right now. One is coming in at $3.17. That's at the BP on East 38th Street. $3.19 at the Get and Go on Bridge Street in Mooresville and a little higher near downtown, 329. That's at the Marathon on South Meridian. Still to come this morning, in the next half hour, there are a few things that you can do here in the city this weekend. Happening at the State Fair grounds, it's huge, colorful flowers and bouquet. They're all on display for the Indiana Flower and Patio Show. Details on the last weekend that you can get tickets for this show.
730 on your Saturday morning. Good morning to you. I'm Cameron Riddle. Take a look. It's snowing for real outside y'all and it is sticking on the roads. That's what it looks like on the north side of town at uh, Michigan Road and 465. Actual snow, actual sticking on the ground. Amber, you told us it was coming. Yes, so we have this light snow. This is your reminder that it doesn't take much snow to create slick road conditions. Plus, we are dealing with a light powdery snow in this case. Uh, this is the vantage point at State Road uh, 37. This is near Epler Avenue where we have that snow on the ground. It is important to take it slow on the roads this morning because this is what we're seeing on some of the secondary roads too. Also still following this crash activity 465 in the northbound lanes. This is near East 16th Street. Traffic's getting around the scene, but you can see that there's still snow and some of the main lanes on that 465 loop. Uh, we still follow. We are still following the crash within the Lebanon area. This is northbound I-65 near State Road 39. The biggest issues through Clinton County, Tippecanoe County, and also White Counties, where we have oranges and reds showing up on the speed sensors. And based on what we're seeing with the average speeds, it could drop as low as 16 miles per hour. And those are based on those speed sensors. So expect slow travel especially if you are traveling in northwest of Indianapolis. At this point, the heaviest band traveling over Marion County right now, southeast of Marion County, so from Cumberland to Greenwood, where we have the darker shade of bloom, where I drew this line, this is where we are seeing the heaviest band at this hour. If you find yourself within this band, traveling over Morgan County at this time, quickly dropping the visibility and also quickly dropping some snow accumulation, and most of the accumulations are actually going to stay below the half inch mark. But as we've been talking about all morning long, it doesn't take much snow to create slick road conditions. And that's what we're seeing at this time. Not going to have that chance for snow all day. We're going to be left with rather cloudy skies and then temperatures are actually going to stay below 30 degrees for the next several hours. Currently seeing a northwest wind at 17 miles per hour, 27 Newcastle, 27 in Columbus. It's 30 in Spencer here in Indianapolis. We're lucky we will be lucky to rise into the upper 20s heading into the later afternoon hours. I am tracking a chilly weekend and milder weather into next week, so I'll have the breakdown of those temperature trends in my forecast. All right, Amber will be standing by to take some notes. 733, a carjacking leads to a chase and a crash on the north side, and police say they're still looking for the passenger who was in that car. But Lawrence police tell us someone reported a carjacking yesterday morning on East 56th Street. Officers spotted the vehicle on Pendleton Pike and tried to stop it, but the driver kept on going. Police ended the pursuit about 10 miles away, and then the driver crashed about a mile later at 75th and Keystone. Police caught up to the driver, but the passenger got away. In a separate incident, one person was taken to the hospital after their vehicle ended up in a pond in Lebanon. It happened yesterday around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, right in front of the Liberty Dialysis building on North ne Lebanon Street. Police got there, and officers say the vehicle was partially submerged with the driver still inside. Firefighters were able to pull that person out. They were taken to St. Vincent Hospital in Indianapolis. There has been no word on their condition. A 27-year-old Indiana woman is dead after a fentanyl overdose from last weekend. Now two people are behind bars. Fox 59's Hannah Fullman explains what led up to that fatal overdose. A 21 and 22 year old are facing several charges after an overdose death in Kokomo. According to court documents, this all began through messages exchanged on social media. The victim and one suspect, 21 year old Emily Rouse, sent Instagram messages back and forth starting on Friday, March 10th. The next day, officers responded to the Pine Valley apartment complex. That's where they found a man performing CPR on the unresponsive 27 year old who ultimately died. Rouse reportedly sold the deceased five fentanyl tablets the night she overdosed. Court documents reveal that Rouse was facilitating the drug deal for her boyfriend, Deshaun Brown. Brown was already in Howard County Jail on gun charges. Police found more than 600 fentanyl pills, more than a pound of marijuana, and a handgun in Rouse's Baxter Road apartment. Police are now warning everyone to take extra caution so situations like this one is not repeated. Absolutely do not trust anything that's not coming out of the package.
whether it be from a, something in prescription from a pharmacy that's specifically for you personally or something that has been bought over the counter from a pharmacy or a, a, a reputable store, do not accept anything from anybody who you even consider to be a friend. The identity of the victim has not yet been released. Rouse and Brown face charges with dealing a controlled substance causing death along with additional drug related charges. Now, if convicted, they could face between 20 and 40 years in prison. Reporting in the newsroom, Hannah Fullman, Fox 59 News. All right, Hannah, thank you. Happening in Zionsville, people at a senior living facility are forced to find new places to stay. Crawford Manor residents were notified that they have until February of next year to move out of their federally subsidized low-income apartments. The building has 100 units. One woman told us she's not wasting any time. She's moving out next Saturday, and she says she's one of the lucky ones, as low-cost apartments are hard to find. Where I'm moving to, they said they had 30 people from Crawford Manor on their wait list. And, you know, people have to move out before somebody can move in. Crawford Manor is owned by the faith-based, nonprofit Baptist Homes of Indiana. The vice president of operations says they are helping residents find new places to live. Once it's empty, the plan is to tear that building down. Well, it was a big night across the board for basketball fans and St. Patrick's Day partiers in the Circle City had a good time last night. Some happy, some disappointed. Purdue and IU fans flooded downtown last night with a mix of celebrations and all of it is far from over. Fox 69's Michael Van Skoik was downtown last night and he was there as those crowds grew for hours. Whether dressed in green or gold, gold or black, or cream and crimson, the festivities have been rolling all day long. I want Indiana to go to the Final Four. It's been a long time. Fans and their families are all craving the same thing, a good ball game. Rolling into the spring break weekend and um, just not a, it's the best time to be able to hang out with the family, um, enjoy some good food, um, watch some good basketball on the screen, and uh, just looking forward to a Purdue win tonight. While many are laser focused on the big screen, it's still a fun time for the little ones a bit more focused on the screen at the tips of their fingers. This space allows for you to eat, to hang out, to talk, to even play Pokemon. And it's a weekend of booming business, especially inside the garage. Now, this is one of our biggest weekends of the year. So all the businesses in here, obviously selling food and drinks. This is a huge weekend for them. And as basketball and St. Patrick's Day collide as the weekend goes on, some will mostly keep their eye on the ball. I might be past the St. Patty's Day uh, fun at this point in my life. So I'm, I'm enjoying having a seat and uh, basketball. <laughs> I leave St. Patty's Day for the uh, for the professionals. I'm I'm past. Uh, I'm retired from from that world. In downtown Indianapolis, I'm Michael Van Skoik. All right, the B-ball bash is also back at the Bottle Works District, outside and inside. It starts today at noon. It'll run until nine o'clock both tonight and Sunday night. As a reminder, there will be more police on patrol this weekend. More than 150 local agencies are part of a campaign to stop impaired driving. It's meant to promote safe driving around the NCAA tournament and St. Patrick's Day. Crash deaths continue to rise in Indiana and around the country. Officers are looking for people driving aggressively over the speed limit and under the influence. The campaign started last Friday and runs until April 4th. Speaking of using rideshare programs, the Safe and Sober program is initiated by Stewart and Stewart attorneys to provide a safe ride home during St. Patrick's Day celebrations. The program started last night and will continue through Sunday at 2 a.m. Those who partake in that program are eligible for a $20 reimbursement if they submit their receipts by fi filling out a form online. You can find this form on our website, fox59.com slash links. Remember, the program is exclusively for rides home. Meantime, Brick World Indianapolis is in town this weekend, and those are Lego bricks we're talking about. Millions of them will be in the Blue Ribbon Pavilion at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. You can check out 50 impressive Lego displays ranging from Indiana Jones to beachy scenes. There's lots of interactive fun for the whole family and plenty of hands-on opportunities. General admission is $16, but there are some discounts available. Kids under three can go free. 
It's happening today from 10 a.m. until 6 and then again tomorrow from 10 a.m. until 5. Also, the Indiana Flower and Patio Show is celebrating its 65th anniversary this year at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. Right now, the show features hundreds of vendors, each hoping to inspire gardeners around the state. The Flower Box and Patio Show runs until Sunday. Tickets are $15 for adults and children 12 and under are free. You can visit indianaflowerandpatioshow.com for more details. 740 still to come in sports. It was a heartbreaker for the Boilermakers. Purdue is on the wrong side of history once again. A top seed knocked off by a 16 seed. Alexa has highlights from the game and more next on Fox 59 Morning Sports. Welcome back and we are following several issues on the roads this morning and this is a new crash that is in the southbound lanes at 465. This is just north of 86th Street and south of 865 where we have the left lane blocked due to that crash activity. Also another car with its hazards on and that right hand shoulder. So be careful through that area. We are seeing the snow sticking to the interstates and there's also a new crash in the southbound lanes or northbound rather of 465. This is the vantage point from 465 and Rockville Road where we have very slow moving traffic there. It doesn't take much snow to create very slick conditions and we have slow moving traffic not only within Marion County but to the north and west, especially through Tippecanoe County where we have that coating of snow creating 
very slow moving uh, travel through the Lafayette area. So expect delays if you are heading in that direction. And of course, give yourself extra time on the roads this morning. We're going to talk about how long snow chances stick around and my forecast and also the unseasonably cold air that is in place. That's coming up after sports. The luck of the Irish helped several lower seeds and upsets Friday, but last night top seeded Purdue needed all the help they could get down the stretch. For the third consecutive year, a double digit seed sends the Boilermakers packing. That was the look on Matt Painter's face all night long. First half, Zach Eady with the dunk puts the Boilers on top, but they actually trail at halftime. Second half, FDU still on top. Purdue with a 10-0 run. Caleb first layup puts the Boilers on top by six, but the Knights refuse to go away. Sean Moore's three puts FDU up by five, and Purdue could never catch up. FDU wins 63-58, and our Chris Widlick was there. From St. Peter's last March to 16-seeded FDU, Purdue is sent home from March Madness way too early. The Knights outquicked, outhustled, and outplayed Purdue, and a sparkling season comes to a shocking end. I can't explain every, every negative emotion you can think of: anger, sadness, distress, everything. Uh, you know, I, I see. Uh, we know how hard we worked this year. Uh, we know how we, we, we exceed expectations all year. So it's basketball. Um, things happen for a reason, and they made more shots, and they're a good team, and they're here for a reason as well. So it's just competitive stuff, and we just got to we got out -peat, competed a little bit today. It's hard to put my finger on it right now, but they're a good team. They came and out-competed us today, and um, they won the game. So. End of the day, they played better than us. We have a lot of things we can go back and work on, go back and see, and let it fuel our fire for next year. Outcompeted and outplayed. Hard words to hear coming out of that Purdue locker room, but it comes from a team that really accomplished much more than anyone anticipated. The positive, virtually everyone on the roster returns. Zach Eady's decision will make a massive difference one way or the other. With the Boiler Bakers in Columbus, I'm Chris Woodlink. Chris, thank you. Today is all about the IU women. Terry Morgan's top-seeded squad hosting the first round of the NCAA tournament in Assembly Hall. This season, the Hoosiers are ranked as high as two in the regular season and won the Big Ten for the first time in 40 years. Between that and winning, earning the program's first ever number one seed, recent success was all a part of the plan for Morin and company. One of our first um, you know, goals that uh, we had for this program was, uh, yes, there's tradition on the men's side, but we really felt confident that we could build the tradition on the women's side as well. Um, and so our hope now is that when people speak of uh, Indiana basketball, it's, it's no longer exclusive just to men's basketball. And they're talking about, um, you know, yes, men's basketball is, uh, you know, they have the banners, but uh, there's also a women's basketball team uh, that has been able to sustain success over the last four to five years. Early start for the Hoosiers today. They'll tip off at Assembly Hall at 1130 this morning. Neil Ivey's Fighting Irish hosting Southern Utah in a first round game on Friday. Notre Dame in control of this one from the start. KK Bransford gets the wild shot to fall for the and one Irish up by 19 points at the break. Second half, Maddie Westfeld with a basket as she's fouled. She leads Notre Dame with 20 points. The Irish roll 82 to 56. They'll face Mississippi State on Sunday. That's it for morning sports. I'm Alexa Ross. Good morning, and we are following uh, some issues on the roads this morning. An uptick in crashes due to the light snow that has been traveling over the state during the early morning hours. It is creating a light coating on the roads and also slick road conditions. So we have this crash in the southbound lanes of 465. Uh, this is just south of 865 and north of 86th Street where we have that left lane blocked. Also a car with its hazards on that right shoulder. We also have slow moving traffic in the northbound lanes of 465, even southbound 465. Very slow moving traffic due to that light snow that is sticking to the ground. It's a reminder that it doesn't take a lot of snow to create very slick road conditions and the total is going to stay below that half inch mark. And 
and low visibility going to be a possibility within the heavier band that we are seeing at this time, mostly east and southeast of Indianapolis at this point. Uh, we have snow falling in Greenfield, Greenwood, also north of Franklin, and it's right along this line where we have the low visibility as this wave continue to push us off to the uh, east southeast. So keeping that snow chance around for the next couple of hours, at least the steadiest of the snow, we'll still have an opportunity for a light snowfall, scattered snow showers into the afternoon. Otherwise, you can expect mainly cloudy skies, also windy conditions for the rest of our day. We're at 24 degrees right now and winds are sustained west northwest 15 miles per hour. Wind gusts up to 30 miles per hour going to be a possibility for today and that is going to create a wind chill factor not only this morning but well into the afternoon. Right now it feels like 11 degrees in Indianapolis and a Muncie 5 for the wind chill in Lafayette. Temperatures holding steady in the mid 20s for the next several hours. Only high 29 degrees. That was earlier this morning. Will likely stay in the mid 20s this afternoon. Again, with the windy conditions, it is going to feel even colder out with wind chills dropping into the single digits for the rest of the day. Dropping to 19 degrees tonight. Skies will turn partly cloudy after midnight. And then tomorrow, a high of 39 degrees, some improvements, but still trending well below average. We should be closer to 53 degrees this time of year, and we'll only have highs nearing the 40 degree mark for our Sunday. Cloud cover moves out, and then we should have brighter skies during the second half of our Sunday. And milder air is also going to be on the way as we start not only the new work week, but kick off the season of spring. The first day of spring is on Monday, and we will start the season at 524 in the afternoon, likely going to have a high near 50 degrees, so closer to seasonal level levels by Monday afternoon. Tuesday, 55 degrees, chance for rain showers late, and then scattered showers, and even at times some thunderstorms are going to be a possibility during the second half of the week. Highs in the upper 50s, and even a chance for highs in the 60s on Thursday before temperatures drop heading into next weekend. Cameron? All right, Amber. Happening this weekend, there is a few movies that are creating some buzz on the big screen. We'll have a look at what is new in theaters next.
755, turning to the big screen now, super-powered action leads the way at the movies this week. Here's a look at what's new in theaters and streaming with Fox's Ashley Dvorkin. All right, here's the situation. Zachary Levi as Billy Batson, along with his superpowered siblings, take on the fury of new foes in Shazam! Fury of the Gods. The daughters of Atlas are coming to hunt us. In part two, the foster kids are juggling teenage life with their adult alter egos when a trio arrive ready to fight for the magic stolen from them, played by Helen Mirren, Lucy Liu, and Rachel Zegler. I told him I was going to kill him. Also in theaters is Moving On with Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin about the journey of estranged friends who reunite to seek revenge on their best friend's widow and their own lessons learned along the way. Help me! Get me out of here! Inside stars Willem Dafoe as an art thief trapped in a New York penthouse after his heist doesn't go as planned. I think the murders are connected. Streaming on Hulu is Boston Strangler, starring Kira Knightley and Carrie Coon as reporters putting their own lives on the line as they investigate and connect the Boston Strangler murders. Follow the magician's elephant. Netflix adds the animated tale The Magician's Elephant. Noah Jupe voices Peter in the book-to-screen story about a boy told by a fortune teller to find a mysterious elephant in his search for his long-lost sister. It leads to an adventure complete with three seemingly impossible tasks, which he's determined will help lead him to her. Plus, there's the current number one at the box office, frightening franchise continuation, Scream 6. In Hollywood, Ashley Dvorkin, Fox News. All right, here at home, there's a lot happening this summer. A music icon will join the celebration in Indianapolis. The Madam Walker Legacy Center continues its celebrations this summer, and Gladys Knight will be the headliner at this year's Summer Festival. The Empress of Soul highlights a concert, which will serve as the center's biggest fundraiser of the year. Her long career has resulted in seven Grammys and a long list of hit songs. The Madam Walker Legacy Center Legacy Fest will run over Juneteenth weekend on June 16th. This year's theme will focus on celebrating the Harlem Renaissance. Tickets will be available for just Gladys Knight's concert, or you can do the full black tie dinner. More performers are set to be announced soon. More news to come as we head into the 8 o'clock hour. The snow has begun to fall and traffic accidents are starting to pile up uh, across central Indiana. We'll have details on how DPW is working to keep the roads clear this morning. And Amber will have the latest in traffic and your forecast.